Hello beautiful! Welcome back to Nat's Beautiful Life. Today I'm going to be sharing with you the books that I've already read and finished in the month of August and then just a little mini TBR. I'm not quite sure what else I'll be reading besides what I'm going to share with you because I've been in a little bit of a mood reading type of phase. So we'll just go with that. Alright, so, so far, thank you Callie, uh, so far I have finished three, four, five, six books, I just want to say, and I also reached my Goodreads reading goal. So, two days ago I hit the 65 book mark, so I'm thinking I could at least make it to 85 maybe 95 uh, before the end of the year, we'll see. Last year I did finish 112 books, but I also read a lot of like the smaller books, like the Sean and McGuire, um, Every Heart of Doorway type of books, and then, or the Wayward Children series, is that what it's called? So those are really short, and then also I read a lot of the Murderbot series, which is also really short, so um, I think that's, I attribute getting to 112 because of those types of books. But let's just get into what I actually read this year. Uh, if you're new to my channel, hey, my name's Natasha. I do books, beauty, bullet journaling videos, and basically anything else I want to make a video about. And I have some exciting news coming about my channel very soon, so be sure that you are subscribed. Click the little notification bell so that you never miss a video. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. All right, so let's get going on the books. The first book that I finished this month was Orange, <laughs> uh, chapter, or collection two. So it's actually, I think, five and six. The uh, uh, volumes are in this one. And this follows uh, a group of friends who receive letters from themselves ten years in the future, and their objective is to save one of their friends' lives who's going to pass away in high school. And it kind of does flashbacks of back and forth of ten years in the future, and mostly you're in their high school um, years. But I really enjoyed this one, and the very end of it, um, like I said, you get five and six in here, but the very, very end of the book is um, actually a short story of Haruro Astronaut. It's a short story um, manga in here. And I know some people call it manga, some people call it manga, some people call it manga. I don't know. I've always called it manga. If you call it something else, you can call it that. I don't speak Japanese, so I don't know. But I did enjoy this and I was in a real manga and graphic novel mood the end of last month and the beginning of this month so I really enjoyed this one and I read the first collection I think last year but that's a good one. Uh, I then read uh, this one it's uh, Orange Future by it's the same lady of course um, Ichigo Takana I hope I'm not butchering your name too bad but um, this one if you, I don't want to spoil anything because if you haven't read the first two, then this will be a spoiler for you. But I will say the way that she went back and forth and like created different timelines with this book was kind of confusing. Um, so I didn't enjoy it as much, but I did kind of enjoy like revisiting the world because I think she wrote this like maybe five years later after she finished it. Um, so it was fun to go back into that, you know, orange world and have a little bit more because I'd finished it up. But, um, yeah, this one is a little bit harder to follow, so just be aware of that. The next and last manga for the month uh, is Snow White with the Red Hair. I have fallen in love with this. And if you watched my bullet journal video for this month, you know it's all about this manga. Uh, so just quickly, because I've talked about it several times already in the past month or so, um, Snow White with the Red Hair is a gal who's born with really unusual red hair and this one king or one prince wants to marry her and kind of make her like another object object in his collection. She decides that that is not for her so she runs away. Along the way she meets some guy who helps her out and his friends. Turns out he's the prince of another uh, kingdom and he's like, look, I'm going to protect you from this guy regardless but you can come stay with us or you can go off on your own and be in the woods, whatever you want to do. And so she chooses to go to his kingdom and she's an herbalist so she she chooses to kind of like increase her learning and things like that. So I have enjoyed this. 
There are parts on the very end of it where you're meeting new characters and it's just not exactly explained who they are. And it can be a little confusing because um, Sorana Akiduki <laughs> is the um, illustrator and author. Some of the characters she she draws look very similar so it can be difficult to tell who's who without like someone saying something or not noticing just some difference in their hair or their clothing or something so some of that can be a little hard to follow but other than that I love the story and I'm looking forward to finishing um, or getting to uh, volume two this is volume one I have volume two volume three comes out in September so, look at, well, I, su I should say it comes out in September in English. I'm pretty sure there's a whole lot more in the actual Japanese um, language because there's an anime of this, which I don't want to watch until I get a little bit further in there because that's just how I am. <laughs> All right, let's move to books with words because that's where I am now. I'm back into books with words. I read Nevermore in July. And this month, I picked up Wondersmith. I love the Nevermore and Wondersmith uh, world. This is by Jessica Townsend. This was a library book, so it's really shiny. Uh, I do own Nevermore, but I'm thinking about getting the UK covers because I like them so much better. But, um, yeah, and this doesn't make any sense until you, like, finish the book, and then the cover makes sense. But, anyway, I love this world. Um... This is The Calling of Morrigan Crow. The first one is The Trials of Morrigan Crow. So to not give you any spoilers, I'll just tell you. Um, the first book is about Morrigan Crow, who was born on a day where um, people think she's like the cause of all the bad things and she is expected to die on like her 11th birthday or something. And turns out, it wasn't that big a deal. <laughs> I mean, it was, but she was not actually causing any of their issues. What it was is in their head, they figured it's her and, and all the cursed children is what they call them that are causing their, you know, misfortune, but it's just them people being people and stuff happening and they just had someone to blame it on. But turns out she actually uh, has some special things about her that she doesn't know about yet and so she is taken by a stranger to the land of Nevermore and it is such a whimsical story. Um, it's been compared to Harry Potter because there's a school setting and all of that but it's not Harry Potter. It is not Harry Potter at all, so don't go in thinking that, but um, it's just so, I, I don't know how to explain I, I really enjoyed it, um, and remember, I read Harry Potter as an adult, not as a child, so I don't have a nostalgia with it, but I kind of like this better than Harry Potter because I love the whimsy of it, whereas Harry Potter, you're in the normal, like the real world, and then there's this magical part. This is all whimsy. Um, even the real world is in our real world. There are magical things within their real world. And where she's taken in Nevermore, those people are not supposed to know about Nevermore because it's even more magical. Um, but I, I love it. And it's not really always mentioned as magic. It truly is just their way of life. And one of my favorite characters is on the cover of Nevermore <laughs> um, is a giant Magnificat. So they're like the size of a horse, but it's a cat that talks, and she's like the head of housekeeping at this hotel, and I love her so much. But um, that's just kind of the, the normal, everyday, like, things of um, Nevermore and living there. So I do love this one. I like this because you've got that friendship element. And I think this is what a lot of people are talking about when they compare it to Harry Potter, is because you do have a young child making friends, going through a school type setting, and in this book you see more of the friendship and they're kind of like trying to figure things out together. So um, I, I think that's what they are talking about. And also they're giving you, like, they're saying this is Harry Potter vibes. It's like you never saw anything like Harry Potter before. And this one is kind of got the same vibe, but it's a totally different thing. So all that being said, if you're looking for a great middle grade with lots of whimsy, lots of friendship, lots of fun, and then yeah, there's, there is mystery and intrigue and you can tell there's like a big, like political something coming or a big, like something, some big bag boogie monster is coming at the end of this book. So I highly, highly recommend Nevermore and Wondersmith. 
All right, moving on to some nonfiction, and we'll go to the TBR. I finished Furiously Happy by Jenny Lawson. Oh my word. Okay, every time I picked up this book, every single time I picked up this book, there was at least one or two or three or four instances where I started laughing so hard that tears were running down my face. This is hilarious. But don't forget the tagline, a funny book about horrible things. She does have mental illness. She has some physical illness. And so she talks about those things. She doesn't hide from them. She doesn't shy from them. She shares them with you. And um, I, I love it because as someone who's had some chronic illness in her life, especially towards the end of the book when she's really getting real with things, it's nice to know that other people struggle and think the same ways that I do sometimes and I I really enjoyed it so I love her work I love what she's doing and um, you know people that have these types of issues um, they really struggle to do everyday things and the fact that she is pushing herself so hard to step out of her comfort zone and to share these lovely gems with us and her husband is a saint because just the conversations like there's um a couple of of chapters in here they're literally called like the fourth argument i had with Fig victor this week um and just the yeah they should have a camera just set up in their house at all times because that would be funny all right moving on um i talked about this a little bit in my productivity books recommendations video so i'm not going to talk too much about this but that is the success habits by napoleon hill i have taken so many notes and i have more notes to take because this is a library book and i couldn't underline things but i have enjoyed this book so much and it's just a nice um refresher if you have read think and grow rich or if you think think and grow rich by napoleon hill is a little bit too advanced for you this is great. This is awesome. Um, and that's all I'm going to say about it. If you want to know more about it, just check out my productivity book recommendations, which I will link down below. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about the books that I have not finished yet, but I plan on reading very quickly. I only have two here, even though I'm pretty certain I'll read more than two books by the end of the month. But these are the two that I know I want to read. First, Vow of Thieves, which is the follow-up to Den of Thieves, and I have to buy this book. This book is so beautiful. The Dance of Thieves book was so gorgeous, and this one is so pretty. I mean, it's just really pretty. I know there's a lot of noise around me. My dog sitting there in a wicker chair, just moving around, looking outside, doing all kinds of things. I'm sorry about the noise, but at least he's not barking, and that's a win. All right, so this book uh, like I said, it's a follow-up to Dance of Thieves. I loved that book so much. It is, um, this takes place in the same world as the Remnant Chronicles, which I do own. It's on one of those shelves, but I haven't read because I, I love Dance of Thieves so much that I wanted to know more about the world, but I didn't know if I should read that before I finished this series or not. You let me know. Should I read that or should I wait till this is finished and then back up and just like start? Just look at that as a whole other thing. I don't know. But I uh, really love this world. And the way that Dance of Thieves ended, it opened up for this one. And I am here for it. It's just like, I cannot wait to see what happened. And right away, the action. I just, mm, mm, yes. I'm looking forward to enjoying my reading time with that. The next book is a book that I did mention in my productivity books video. Once again, I will link that down below. I've already read this book um, many years ago. Eat That Frog by Brian Tracy. And it is 21 great ways to stop procrastinating and get more done in less time. It's about 100 pages long, something like that. And so I can read this in one sitting. So I'm really looking forward to revisiting this and just kind of refreshing my memory. Um, also, it will fulfill a challenge of rereading a book because I wanted to do four rereads this year. I've done one. I have a plan for another one <laughs> and this will be three and then I need to find a fourth one I guess. But anyway, that's enough of my rambling. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you here very soon right here on Nat's Beautiful Life. Have a great day gorgeous.